My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead at Fishbowl Solutions. And just to make sure you're in the right place, we're going to be giving a webinar on the five key reasons to upgrade to Oracle Web Center Content or Portal 12C. So I'd also like to thank you for taking our first poll question. We're going to have a couple of poll questions throughout as we want to make this as interactive as possible. And so based on those poll questions and your responses, we can kind of tailor the content a little bit as we're going to cover both Web Center content and Web Center portal in today's webinar. So here is our agenda for today's discussion. I'm going to start off by introducing my friend Jerry Aber, who's going to be leading most of today's webinar. I'll then provide a brief overview on Fishbowl, who we are and what we do. And then the five reasons that we've seen over the last two years since the release of 12C, those five key reasons to consider upgrading to Web Center, Web Center Content or Portal 12C now. At the end of the webinar, we'll have some information about our upgrade offering, kind of two scenarios that you can choose from. And then we'll take some questions. So if you have questions during today's webinar, there is a little question and answer box. You can submit your questions in there. We'll be monitoring them throughout, and then we'll look to answer them at the end. A few house housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded. So everyone that registered for the webinar will get a link by email to the recording and we will make that available as soon as our part two in this series ends on Tuesday, August 8th. So I'll have more information on that at the end of the webinar today as well. This is, this is part one of two, and on, we're gonna actually have part two on Tuesday. So with that, I'm gonna let Jerry introduce himself. Thanks, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, for those of you who haven't uh, run across me yet, um, my name is Jerry, I'm the Director of Solutions here at Fishbowl. And I've been here for a little over eight years with about 15 years in the Web Center stack. Um, as I had some time with it in my previous life uh, prior to Fishbowl. And I've been through many upgrades on the portal and content server side in terms of enterprise rollouts of the Web Center stack. So I've got some experience and I've been through the trenches like many of us at Fishbowl here have. Thanks, Jerry. So a quick overview on Fishbowl. Really why, and one of the reasons I am I want to introduce us is kind of make some connection between, you know, who, what Fishbowl does and the reason we chose this topic for today. And Fishbowl's really been in the business of helping customers solve their costly and frustrating knowledge sharing problems with Web Center and other technologies such as Google Enterprise Search, Mind Research, and PTC technologies for product data management, product lifecycle management. So our roots really were founded in helping customers extend and optimize their investment in Web Center, going back to universal content management, all the way back to Stellant. So since 1999, that's really been our focus. And since our founding, we've done over a thousand projects. So with those projects, we found some common problems. And out of those common problems, what we what we wanted to try to help customers do is you know, solve those solve those problems. So how we've helped them do that is we've also produced some software over the years that they can purchase as a value add component to Web Center and really help them fill some of those gaps that Web Center might have from a feature function standpoint. And then to really ensure that your Web Center system operates as you would expect it to. So we have a an enterprise support team here as well. So if you're looking for more of a direct personal connection to a person from a support perspective, and you're looking for better support for your system, we do have an enterprise support team that can help you make sure your system is up and running and operating as you would expect it to. So again, we're gonna really focus on five key reasons that we've seen over the last few years, really since the release of 12C, that we've helped us really construct and put together this webinar to share with, with customers of, uh, of Web Center. But really across those reasons, 
we understand that customers upgrade for different reasons. And so there might be a compelling event that occurs in your organization, um, or it's just that you have a directive to get an upgrade done. And so we wanted to share a little bit about that because of the upgrades we've done recently, the customers have all had maybe diff different reasons for their upgrade and some different compelling events that kind of you know, provided the impetus for them to upgrade. So we're just gonna share a few of those here. A manufacturing customer, for example, was on 10G. And over the years, and they had been using Web Center Universal Content Management for many years. And over the years, they really found that of the various instances they had, they had a lot of unmanaged or not properly managed instances of Web Center. And so they were really looking to consolidate those down to ensure that they didn't have to administer those, um, all the ones that really weren't being used, as well as really taking a look at the data and content that resided in each of those instance, instances um, were really a, an opportunity to consolidate that content. And then obviously being on 10G, they wanted to get up to the latest support and maintenance contract for Premier Supports specifically that Oracle would off, that Oracle uh, Web Center 12C would offer. Another 10G customers in financial services, and this customer was really focused on the user experience of their internet or employee portal. And that over the years, that internet had really turned into a link farm and had a poor contribution model to get content updated and published to their, their intranet. It was really based on the old Site Studio contribution model. And so as they looked at getting up to the new version, they really wanted to take a look at the user experience. So they really dug into how users use the site and what value they get from it. So they really helped understand the, the different personas and user journeys that someone would take to get to that, to get to, to um, navigate the internet. And so that really, that really provided the, the motivation for them to create a user experience for both consumption and contribution to ensure that this new employee portal would get utilized. And again, that's based on Web Center content and Portal 12C. Another customer in manufacturing, they were on, a, they were on dot seven of 11G, working pretty good. They were looking to do an integration with a third party, some third party um, software. And as part of that, they wanted to produce videos that they used for product documentation and they had been paying for flip factory licenses. So they noticed that with 12C, 12C supports Telestream, and so there's a new conversion engine available for them to, to produce what's called FFmpeg, and that's actually a free tool. So they, they noticed that, and as they were looking to do those integrations with those software components, they're like, well, why don't we do, do this at the same time, get up to 12C, take advantage of this different conversion engine that we can utilize to produce our videos and get them distributed through YouTube. The last customer was on the dot nine release. Again, working pretty well, very stable. This was a portal customer, but their IT department had a requisition for new hardware. So they had the resources available at the time. And so as they're gonna be touching various systems, they said, well, why don't we just dedicate our resources to not only the hardware side, but the software side. So that kind of compelled them to upgrade to 12C as well. And as they were doing that and doing some testing, they also noticed a security vulnerability that we're gonna share a little bit more information on that a little bit later. So just a few examples. And again, as you encounter these in your organization, just know that we've kind of been there, done that across these examples. So in most cases, we're probably gonna be familiar with you know, the reasons that you wanna upgrade. And uh, the last one that I wanted to share is throughout all these customers, it's really getting to the latest version of support um, that 12C would offer. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry to talk specifically about reason number one, support and maintenance with Web Center 12C. Perfect, thanks Jason. So let's kind of jump right in um, on making that first uh, jump here in the first reason. So number one reason it does pop up and it's come up quite a bit is staying current on that support and maintenance. And so what does that mean or what does that look like? Um, as we saw the poll, there's nobody that registered that mentioned 10GR3, but if you are talking to other folks, uh, 10GR3 is um, out of Premier and out of extended support, and there is a sustaining support offer out there, but it's charged on a per renewal pricing, so you can get kind of spendy to get there. Um, most of you were on 11G, a little bit of 12C, but there's some awareness on the support and maintenance scenarios you should know of in terms of those dates. 
Uh, premier support ends 20 January 18, and extended support ends 20, 20 January 2021. And that you can get on extended support, but as you can see, it gets a little bit pricey from that perspective as you look to go to year six, year seven, year eight with respect to that extended um, support. There is a, your main problem, like I said, is, is kind of keeping current with what the patches and upgrades are that Oracle puts out as things are found, bugs are found and or things are extended through the course of that version. So one of the main uh, support scenarios that pops up is the patches. And if that patch cannot be backported to you, you might be forced into a situation where you get pushed into an upgrade. And it'd be nice to be proactive on that scenario as opposed to being reactive and taking some kind of a hit on your user adoption or your environment as a result of not being as current as you possibly could. So one of those scenarios uh, pops up in a portal um, customer we did here recently that was um, dealing with portal pages. And so getting the latest version gets you those latest patches where you can get those critical changes dealt with quickly and effectively. A customer that uh, had this problem was, um, the issue was around page replication. So a user creates a new portal page, a new page doesn't necessarily show up on the second node in the clustered environment. In order to resolve that, you would have to do a restart of the portal servers to make sure that the new page is available in both nodes of the cluster. So that is fixed under 12.2.1.0, but you don't necessarily want to take um, some kind of node out of your extra work just to get stuff copied from one node to the other. You want to make sure you're as clean on that critical path as possible in terms of the effect of how your system stays up and how she works. But there are other numerous areas out there. We could spend uh, quite a few hours going through those various impacts. Um, I'd recommend you continue to look back and we can help you look back through those patches and those upgrades to find out where those differences are in your environment as most people have difference differences of implementations on how they use the system. Reason number two that pops up is around new features. And we're gonna focus the new set of features on the content side of the house first, and then we'll slip over to the portal side of the house. With regards to the new features on web center content, we're gonna focus on three basic themes. Improvements in the new UI over the legacy UI, changes and improvements to the content server infrastructure, which apply mostly to the imaging server consolidation as well as performance and configuration patterns. And lastly, basically how 12C starts to position you for that cloud set of use cases that you might invoke in your environment regarding hybrid, full cloud, and mix and matching in your environment to make that work. And then we'll talk a little bit about the cloud offerings and where that plays. And one of the offerings you're gonna hear about is the uh, what was called formerly Document Cloud Service, but is now called Content and Experience Cloud actually known as CEC. The latest release of Web Center content has a completely redesigned user interface. You can still use the old one, the legacy one, which many people have continued to do, but many are taking advantage of the new modern, fast, and intuitive user interface that comes with the new Alt UI, Alt to Skin setup. It is a powerful search that includes instant search suggestions as you type in the search field and supports filtered search capabilities which allow you to narrow your search results by looking at only specific content by type, for example, and only looking at documents instead of images or things favorited by me and so forth. So you get a much better opportunity to drive that experience for you. It's also got an integrated viewer, so you can view and see read files that are, without having to open them in another tab, you get a combination of the thumbnail, the view of the document, and some of the metadata associated with that. It's also designed to be mobile first. So as we know, many of our customers are going to a more mobile first approach to how they view, manage, and deal with their content from a contribution and consumption perspective. So here's a content viewer comparison between the ADF UI that's out there today, also kind of known as the web UI, and the built-in legacy UI that had so many of you have seen with the um, out-of-the-box content server over the years. 
The ADF UI uh, debuted in 11G as a standalone web UI application and has now been built in for that much improved user experience. As we show here, you can actually view the content details for the content items, see the image, as well as the thumbnails on one pane of glass. If Web Center Imaging is enabled, which is a standalone component on the content server that you can enable, you'd also be able to view annotations and work with annotations on that document in that single pane of glass. Compared to the old UI, it's much more interactive and inviting way to view content, add content, and interact with content, which hopefully helps improve your user adoption. Any customizations, though, you should be aware of that you'd like to see as part of the new UI to take advantage of development or MDS customizations in order to make that happen. Uh, just to be aware, um, there is some functionality that's not available in the ADF UI that is available in the legacy UI, but there are plans in the roadmap for it to get there. But those of you who deal with records management or might be considering doing records management, the ADF UI does not take that into account yet, nor does it take into account the digital signatures portion. As I mentioned earlier, the, the viewer allows you to deal with more annotations. So the WebSense Content Document Viewer now has this, this added support of the annotations directly on the document, like the IPM process did, if you're familiar with how IPM worked. This enhanced capability provides business users the ability to easily collaborate and comment directly on the document, like you see here with redactions, highlighting, and sticky notes. So the tool palette is where you pick up the highlight of the toolbox or the text box and the sticky notes to provide that type of annotation. You get a granular security model for controlling who has access to view the original document so that as it goes through maybe a workflow process, it gets redacted and touched. The final viewing by the public can be protected. Redactions support hiding sensitive portions of any restricted documents and the ability to pre prevent, sorry, of viewing or downloading the original document. You also get an option to see what the audit history might be so you can see who was making changes to the document. There's also um, under, 12, under 12C, um, a portal now allows you to take the Web Center content redesigned interface and embed that into the portal experience if you choose to do so. It's a simple way to blend the content server into your portal experience if you so desire and Web Center Portal users can take advantage of the new UI that is much now much more cleaner and faster and intuitive than it has been in the past. So it blends the experiences between the content server and the portal in one, one UI. You can easily find content, view content info, and collaborate on content with your colleagues and get a single click, at, click, or, click access to most common actions like checking out, checking in, downloading, favoriting, and getting links and viewing properties. On our second theme, uh, changes and improvements to the content server infrastructure. Um, this applies a little bit mostly to the infrastructure and migrating content. And with, since there was nobody on 10G, um, we're not going to spend too much time on that. But that's more of a migration situation because the underlying architecture is drastically different from 10G to 11G. So it's more along the lines of a migration versus an upgrade. But from an 11G perspective, um, there's an opportunity to take advantage of any transformation. So if you're moving to environments or you have an infrastructure change or you're going to 12C from 11G, there's an opportunity at that point from a cost perspective and time perspective to reduce the number of touch points that you have on an upgrade scenario, which reduces the impact to your user adoption and your users throughout the course of an upgrade. You want to do it once where possible versus two or three times and reduce the number of impacts to the customer. One of the big challenges, or one of the big changes from the infrastructure side is the imaging component that's embedded into the content server and provides imaging functionality to Web Center content users. The Imaging 11G tool that is provided by the imaging component is enabled with the content server by default and used to migrate imaging documents to the latest version of Web Center content. When talking about imaging, we do deal with a lot of customers who talk about imaging 
from scanning to placement and storage into the content server. It's not just um, you might have been across a lot of conversations with image and process management, which was tied a lot to the AP accounts table processes, but there's a lot more scanning and storage of images in the content server as a part of normal non-AP activities, which leads into the topic of how enterprise capture, which is formerly known as Oracle document capture, might be rolled into your overall solution. So you can use enterprise capture and a lot of its new features to enable business applications that really start with the document capture process. Maybe it's HR related, maybe it's um, simple scanning related to get imagery of and things you want to use within your websites or your portal sites. The new capabilities, you can include viewing documents in the native application, search for documents within a batch of images, and you have the ability to classify documents as attachments and send them along to the Web Center content server for final storage. From a content perspective, there's three other areas that should, uh, we should note regarding digital asset management, desktop integration suite, and trash support. So just to highlight a few things, 12.2.1 um, now has the support for Telestream, uh, latest video transcoding that Jason mentioned earlier with a use case one of our customers was using. This Telestream's Vantage product offers one of the industry's best and most up-to-date video conversion packages available. It offers a family of best-in-class video transcoding products for multi-platform <coughs> multi distribution, broadcast, cable, VOD, and so forth, so that you can include that as part of your conversion process and your overall solution. Like Jason mentioned, it mentioned that um, one of our customers used that for third-party video transcoders for formatting of FF, FFMPEG and others as part of that conversion process which alleviates the need to have a third party add-on for that. Desktop integration suite also has some changes. Uh, it supports the latest desktop versions of Office 365, uh, which is around Microsoft Office 2013. And those integrations provide menus to access, manage content, insert links, compare and manage documents using the desktop applications like Word and Excel. In addition, there's productivity folders, show you your workflow inbox, save searches, and checked out content directly from Windows Explorer. And lastly, the trash component. There's an equivalent support for framework folders trash support like the predecessor's folders G component had. The server-side implementation is around capabilities of configure control to toggle that off and on, and it has user-based trash bins are available. So just some nice features for your day-to-day -day content management activities that you would take advantage of. In the Web Center content realm of things, there have been some things that have been deprecated that you may or may not be aware of or know what some of these acronyms mean, but um, information rights management, the content portal suite, uh, SharePoint web parts, the dynamic converter template editor, the uh, contract content tracker reports, URM adapters, and the IPM managed server obviously goes away with the uh, with it being rolled into the Web Center content platform, as well as the JSP Tomcat support and Oracle Document Capture, which has been replaced by Enterprise Capture. Just want to point a few of those out to you so you are aware of what was deprecated. One of the use cases from a content perspective um, for a customer who went through an upgrade was a large Swedish lock manufacturer, which just happens to be the, one of the world's largest by sales volume. They create videos in the format of FFP, FFMPEG. It's easier to, to read than say. So they distribute their product and documentation in video format. They saw it was powerful to move to the 12C scenario because uh, they were on 11G at the time and take advantage of that one step approach to the upgrade, leverage the new features, set up a new production environment, and only impact their customers one time as part of that process. So as a large manufacturing organization, they rely on these other systems to ensure that that data associated with their products is properly managed, and that's included in a product information management solution for their master data management. That helps them solve that experience of managing and viewing the videos, as well as reducing the cost of the Flip Factory license. 
Because we can't cover everything that's um, part of the upgrade in various environments, um, we make sure we include a link to where the R Confusion middleware documentation could be regarding Web Center content to see where all the different impacts are that have occurred over the last few versions. So let's, before we, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as we transition over to the Web Center portal side of things, let's dig into the capabilities that portal solves from a business user perspective in terms of the new versions. There are a lot of improvements and new features added to the Web Center Portal 12C to support the business users. Some of them lie around the table first UI, which is optimized for mobile and tablet use under the multi-channel um, view of things. The UI includes two bootstrap themes for page templates and a wide selection of page layouts. and includes native HTML5 tag support, including the camera, geospatial, and phone. From an ease of use perspective, the portal includes a next generation portal composer. As you went from 11G to 12C, it changed from spaces to portal. And that the portal includes a next generation composer that allows for changing using draft mode, changing the page layout on the fly, context rewiring components, and if you choose to use, do so, a WYSIWYG page editor. On the connected data side, 12C offers a new wizard driven tool set that supports building contextual visualizations and to integrate data from applications running in the cloud non-prem. The wizard driven tools for data integration through support through REST and SQL data sources. And lastly, the ease of use hybrid environment perspective, users can take advantage of a new content manager task flow that enables browsing and viewing of documents in the content server directly. There's a simplified content publishing model that includes updated contribution tools for multilingual text, images, and video. And those edits to the portal can also be performed in line and in context of the portal page being edited. From a developer and administrator perspective, there's also been a number of improvements that we'd like to highlight. From an ease of use multi-channel side, there's an ADF stack uptake from a JSF2, Jersey2, or Oracle REST API standard, the whole Alta UI model UI look and feel is in place. There's capabilities for producing and consuming REST APIs. In earlier versions, only SQL data sources were supported. Now you can perform and create, retrieve, update, edit operations through the REST API. Easy developer and production environment provisioning with a jumpstart kit and auto deploy. From an overall use, you get the perspective of the portal security that's been improved and made easier by the redu reduction of the number of roles that are managed. You can still add your own custom roles if you need to, but there's been a reduction set to allow you that truly delegated um, administration. There's also the ability to control the portal lifecycle easier with the browser for easy deployments of the portal and its assets and shared libraries and content from stage to production in just a few steps. Your site design and your development model might alter how that works, but out of the box, you can push that rather easily. With 12C, you get some also access to some hybrid solutions, and they give you the access to enable with a script that allows for admins to deploy Web Center portal in a multi-node clustered topology and with a simple configuration. You can also leverage the Content Manager Task Flow, which supports hybrid content management to Web Center content. So there is a, a big change that some of you might not be aware of with respect to the portal framework. Um, the portal framework has been deprecated moving to 12C, but there is a migration utility that automates the migration of your Web Center assets. There's a set of well-documented steps to making that happen in order to migrate those custom assets and task flows and custom beams. There's a set of detailed guidelines for migration of the advanced customizations as well as the deal with those custom server filters or ADF phase listeners. And again, portal framework is not available under 12C. So on the performance side of things, um, there's been some significant architectural changes made over the course of the last several releases to improve the average response times, which has been great to hear. And you, get, you also can monitor the overall performance of portal with the portal, excuse me, Web Center portal performance pack. That performance pack gives you a diagnostics tool that helps you to integrate seamlessly in your development phase 
and view where detailed analysis is kind of often required to see what might be happening in your portal environment for performance issues. A performance packs makes it easy to identify slow requests, drill down to specific hot paths and methods, uh, doesn't overwhelm you with too much data, and aggregates it kind of data in different ways that lets you kind of slice and dice what might be taking place in your environment, and provides some hints on some of those optimizations. On the uh, deprecated issue for Portal, um, the poll task flow is gone, uh, document task flow is gone. The VPM task flow is available, it's just not part of the catalog initially. You have to reinitialize that basically as part of that integration with VPM Suite, and web clippings and rich text portlets are now gone as well. But for the most part, um, it's been quite an improvement up through 12C, and we've seen some great success uh, making the portal work um, with our stuff on top of it as well in terms of our product and IP. Uh, one of our customers uh, wanted to share another success story on the portal side of things that went through an upgrade. There was a um, property insurance um, company located in Minnesota, about 2,400 employees across uh, all four, most of the 48 states. And they had a portal-based internet incorporating business user contribution, Google search, and personalization and mobile access as part of their business problems that they were trying to solve. They were using Oracle Web Center content for a lot of years, and they were using basically um, Site Studio as the front end for their internet and moved into a portal scenario as part of that upgrade process. The information that was being serviced through that employee nature was built on a legacy web content solution, like I mentioned, and because of this, it ended up with kind of incremental improvements over time that caused a lot of heartburn with being able to manage it and provide a user experience owned by the business. So combining that, those challenges with poor search options, they were having a difficult time finding um, company and role specific information that they needed to do their jobs. And these kind of problems were leading to an internet that was seeing less and less traffic over the course of time. So they worked with us to help modernize an employee internet under the 12C model. And they now have a more modern portal that has enabled them to better inform and engage their employees. And have a and also works with a new navigation and Google-like search set of features to provide that better search experience. It gives you more of a sticky experience. The framework approach they use was basically our portal solution accelerator on top of Web Center. So those of you who might have seen some of our portal solution accelerator offerings over the course of the last few years, works under 11G, also works under 12C to help extend those, <clears throat> help extend those portal and content server features under your own custom UI. To deliver that in a quicker fashion and provide more ownership of the content at the hands of the business. So on the portal side of things, we also provided the link to let you see where the other um, options and features might be with respect to 12C. And so feel free to grab that anytime and dig a little deeper. All right, so let's try to jump into uh, reason number three, performance, which is always a key issue with customers. Um, let's talk about some of the scalability and performance issues that popped up on, from a framework folder's viewpoint. Those of you who don't know, framework folders were introduced from the PS5, as it was called back then, 11.1.1.5, hierarchical folder interface similar to the conventional system, um, and it's basically a number of improvements over the folder's G model. The framework folder's component, as the underlying folder architecture, you get many new functionalities and features that have been made available. The mass metadata updates, um, query uh, metadata propagation, querying folders and framework folders component. Uh, querying folders has been a nice, handy, and popular um, uh, tool that people have been using for those with folder um, setups in their environment. You can query folders that contain the actual repository items and return those back in the query, and the contents of the query folders can be changed dynamically as the contents of the repository change. By using the query folder approach and the propagation function, you get a one can make mass metadata updates of folders in a very easy way. There's also the issue of uh, content items, which was a, a problem under folders G. You have unlimited content items available to you now. There's no limitation of 1,000 that you had before. So you're getting the availability to use that in a much greater fashion. You also have enhanced search functionality. With framework folders, there's several enhanced features are available to make search easier and more performant. You can save a query result in a query folder, as well as records management by using 
<coughs> excuse me, retention query folder, which allows you to get at that retention query or retention content much faster. On the performance benchmarking, um, one thing that pops up is um, a lot of the times when we're working with customers and new customers are considering portal, that performance, where does that sit from a 12C perspective? And so under 12.2.1 compared to 11.1.1.9 and .8, we've seen quite a bit of uh, changes over the course of the last couple of years. So there's a white paper out there for those of you who have not come across that yet. That really helps you guys figure out and size the environment for your deployment deployment based on the number of users. They basically profile a typical large corporate intranet with no integration or services, uh, like discussion forums, so a BPM and so forth, and your implementation might differ slightly based on the number of users you have. But there's a rule of thumb based on the number of nodes they have with respect to how they map out the number of, um, how your infrastructure needs to be built out to support the number of users you have, number of concurrent users you have. We've also tested loads of 200, 400, 800, 16, 24, and 30, 200 users under that configuration based on the white paper and seen some really good results on that. We found the transaction per second scaled linearly and the number of users and the number of managed servers, average server response time increased with the number of users went up. The white paper dictates that, or outlines that the transaction per second per core improved from 38% to 47% under 12.2.1 compared to 11.g.9 and 11.g.8, respectively. The response time improved 26% in Oracle um, Portal 12.2.1.0 compared to 11.1.9. So the average response time was basically a 60% increase between 12 and 11.g. We also have our own numbers with our customers with respect to how their own digital workplaces on top of Web Center Portal and Web Center content performed based on various configurations that map to the, how that white paper lays out, which is basically 200 concurrent users per node. So the first example, uh, the first one on the left, um, is a large conglomerate and with communications and car service divisions. They wanted to bring all those divisions together under one digital employee digital workplace and under one brand. This meant they had about 80,000 users accessing the portal during the course of their business day. So far, the results have been very good, been very happy with their performance. And the numbers you see in that first box are their homepage load times for concurrent users of 1,400 was less than 4.5 seconds. Um, also at 1700 was less than five seconds. Uh, one thing to make note on that homepage is since it's the biggest page or the most primary page that hits most often, there was a number of things, including integrations with some uh, back office systems on that page. So it was not exactly just simple content. There were a number of things taking place at that time. Secondary load times under the 1400 and 1700 were 2.5 seconds and 3.6 or 3.0 seconds respectively. The second customer is a large insurance company with about 50,000 users. They uh, measured a few different metrics, but overall the performance has been good. And you're seeing page views at 277,000 unique visits and so forth through the course of this process. But they've also seen sub four and five second response times based on the configuration of their site. The other one, uh, the third one on the list is the um, property and casualty insurance company we talked about. And their new portal launched in February, and the performance has been really good, but they're also seeing widespread adoption based on the business problems they were trying to solve. So they're seeing their page views are up, their actions per visit are up, and their unique visits are up. And they've reduced their publishing time by 90% as a result of that. So that platform is giving them the business benefits they were looking for, not just the uh, performance statistics. So, during the course of the upgrade conversations and the uh, upgrade projects we've done over the years, there's a number of things we can discuss, but several of them pop to mind when we're talking about tips and gotchas. From a Web Center content perspective, it's good to note that even though there is a new ADF UI, it is a bit difficult to customize. You'd have to get down into the MDS repository and do your own ADF development to make that work if you wanted to extend that 
um, that platform and provide more feature sets in it that are more targeted to your business problems. Um, there's also a migration process um, with respect to moving from 10G to 11G when it comes to um, the content server. If you have a framework folder scenario and you're on folders G, there is a simple migration process that makes that work. But if you are on 10G um, and you want to take advantage of, a, of an upgrade and move to 12C, there is, it's more of a, a migration than an upgrade per se. Um, even in the earlier versions of 11G, you might want to consider that because migrating versus in place upgrade, you could take advantage of any kind of transformation activities you want to perform prior to the new rollout. Sometimes the taxonomy changes, and some integrations change, and it's best to do those at the same time. From a portal perspective, um, that upgrade from 11G to 12C with the spaces needs some special considerations for how that works because you cannot export out of 11G space and move it into a 12C portal. You have to do an in-place upgrade of, say, a cloned environment, move it from 11G to 12C, then export the site from 12C cloned to 12C production and dev. And then we want to make sure that everybody continues to stay aware of performance, 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 that if you have done performance testing in the past or pen testing in the past, you're one, going to go do that again if you're introducing new hardware as part of your upgrade equation. If you have not run that before, um, we've got considerable experience in working you through those steps because we've seen false positives as a result of running some of the scripts people have run in the past to prove out um, that, yeah, I am performant, but I'm really not when push comes to shove. All right, let's kind of jump into the fourth reason, uh, security risks. Um, this one has a number of uh, considerations, but as you move through your legacy versions, you want to make sure you're getting the latest security updates uh, from Oracle regarding those patches, whether they be major patches or incremental patches to get you there. But at a high level, we think everybody understands those main concerns and the vulnerabilities that you might be exposed to as a result of being on an earlier version especially if you're running some older software OSs. Uh, for example, we've seen some surprisingly 11% of um, business users out there, or customers are running Windows XP, which kind of illustrates some of that need to get yourself moved up, to get yourself current to avoid any issues that might pop up with respect to security holes. Old software can make your business non-compliant with government and or industry regulations or certifications that you need to meet. Oracle continues to satisfy more of the government regulations and HIPAA regulations as you roll out those changes. And remember that you know, newer versions continue to be developed, and when security risks or holes are found, patches can be released. And the farther back you are and the farther you get away from the more current versions of patches, the more you are at risk and how that rises. There is a, to illustrate that, there is a, um, even under uh, some pen testing, penetration testing, if you will, that uh, as an example that we found over the course of the last six months with a customer we're working with, that um, there was a security hole in Web Center content, and as they were going through their penetration test on portal and content, that um, they found that there were JSP files that could be checked into the content server that would expose you to malicious JSP code to take over what might be happening on the content server. That basically opens up and exposes the, the accessibility to the content server and put you at risk. That patch was fixed. It was a fix provided under 11.1.1.9, but it was also maintained under 12C. And this current customer that we're working with, we're taking them from 11G to 12C um, once their new hardware. Their driving factor was, like Jason mentioned earlier, I have a new set of hardware I need to take advantage of, even though I just rolled out my portal just a matter of weeks ago. So just to keep that in mind, um, that performance and penetration testing are key to any kind of server and, and portal rollout. And last but not least, um, our last reason is about the cloud foundation. As you're trying to move and consider what your cloud strategy is going to be, you might want to take into consideration the various options that Oracle's putting on the table with respect to satisfying cloud, which you know everybody knows Oracle is moving to, and the combination of on-prem, full cloud, and um, some hybrid combination is satisfied by the Oracle's um, technology stack. So the hybrid solution combines basically an example of Oracle Document Cloud Service 
which is also called now Content Experience Cloud, and enabling Web Center content to interact directly with the Document Cloud service. That enables you to extend the productivity and accessibility of content in the cloud as well as on-prem. In addition, the ECM strategy goes beyond merely just integrating the on-premise and cloud content repositories, but it's a way of easily extending other SaaS and PaaS solutions and content enabling them for collaboration. So if you're using some SaaS offerings like um, uh, or Oracle Cloud or ERP and stuff like that, there's, there's opportunities to integrate them with the content server on-prem or even document cloud servers. Basically, Oracle is a leading cloud provider in the SaaS and PaaS areas. And they currently sit in the upper right of Quadrant um, from Gar Gartner. So basically, that, that hybrid ECM is a pretty seamless solution when it comes to design and integration between the cloud and on-prem solutions. It makes it easy to make that complexity die down. There is some examples that have popped up over the course of time with respect to what hybrid cloud might mean in terms of use cases. One of the most prevalent and simple use cases involves the collaboration with agents, third party agents and um, partners. For example, advertising agencies where both, scenario, where both parties need to leverage basic desktop collaboration and exchange ad copy and creative work. The experience delivers a frictionless sharing of content among internal and external users, and most folks can access the content from any device and easily exchange it by simply dragging and dropping it into a folder and sharing a link given to your collaborator. However, unlike kind of consumer-grade content cloud solutions, the hybrid solution provides robust security, version control auditing, and content syncing so files can always be properly managed and in compliance between the cloud and your on-prem needs. The second one's around sales and service collaboration, which is kind of a pretty hot button, much hot button these days. We talk a lot about that. And those use cases include customer service, customer onboarding, and order billing. Many of the organizations desire to develop more personalized services and deeper customer relationships as a result of that process. So by incorporating content sharing and collaboration solution directly within the customer service self-service portal, for example, basically you can deliver a cohesive contextual personalized and rich branded experience. And the last one is around mobile field workers where you can apply and depend on your smartphone and tablets to provide a user experience that brings data from your on-prem or cloud service and share content, collaborate in more of a mobile fashion for those field workers. Just to give you a view of what the hybrid solution might look like between Web Center content and document cloud service, so this is a screenshot that shows the Web Center content UI, as well as the dot cloud service, kind of like an iframe look that allows you to, to have one experience between the on-prem and cloud view of things. Web Center content integration with the Oracle dot cloud service is basically a user interface that can embed the collaboration folder from dot cloud service into the user experience, and contents get access to both docs without authenticating to docs and access to the content server that you're used to. When you do that, there's also, when you're talking about the scanning portion of things and you wish you have a scanning solution in place with Enterprise Capture, you can also release that script into Doc Cloud Service, which Doc Cloud Service may or may not be directly integrated with your on-prem solution, but that is a path you can take with respect to the whole scanning of images. On the cloud front, um, we're giving you a snapshot here what the Oracle Cloud offerings are from a lift and shift perspective. So since we're talking about it, I want to make sure you're aware of what those primary options were. We're actively discussing these on a regular basis these days. It's a very hot topic. And the first option that comes to mind is the bare metal cloud service. It's a fairly new offering, but it is their next gen of physical cloud architecture. As you lift and shift from on-prem, you might take advantage of bare metal with respect to moving your Web Center content instance or Web Center portal and content instances onto the bare metal cloud service and managing that through a full administration capability that you have today at a much def different price point than what you would manage it from your on-prem perspective. Second option is Oracle Cloud Compute. That provides a flexible and scalable computing block storage and networking services as well. 
Um, it is the, we'll say full disclosure, that Compute Cloud Service is probably eventually going to get replaced with Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Service over the course of time as their technology, their Gen 1 stack is getting replaced with what the Gen 2 stack is, which is bare metal. Java Cloud Service is another offering that enables you, and as you move up the stack, you tend to drive less overhead of what you need to manage from an administrative perspective, and you can deploy your Java apps or Web Center content to Java Cloud Service as well. And last but not least, the Portal Cloud Service um, allows you to do the complete 12C portal installation of your app on their Web Center Portal Cloud Service and integrate that content server with the portal. Um, one note, there is no real SaaS offering from a Web Center content perspective other than Web Center Portal Cloud Service and Portal and Cloud and then servicing up your content through a UI in the portal. Uh, we solve that problem by having, we have our own UI that we can serve up through the portal and provide similar if not identical features that come out of the content server that you are used to on-prem. Uh, the one note you don't see here, in case some of you are wondering, is the Content Experience Cloud. We kind of view that as not part of the topic today from a lift and ship perspective, but Cloud CEC is a cloud offering that we'll be talking about in upcoming weeks with additional webinars as you're thinking about more of a migration from on-prem to the CEC model depending on the use cases you have. So keep an eye out for that invite. So how does that align to how we can help you with your upgrade? So we come at it from a couple of viewpoints. Um, the first is um, we've been doing these upgrades for a long time, so we know how to come at them with respect to providing your services to get you from point A to point B. We offer upgrade services. We've seen customers try to do it on their own and seen them struggle and fail. Um, it's not because necessarily they don't have the technology chops to pull it off, in some cases it is, but the majority of time it's regarding time and effort it takes it for your own resources to do it. And it just sits by the wayside. It isn't as easy as just a one, two, three step type of thing. There could be a lot of dependencies to paste on your, uh, depending on your um, topology and where the hooks are to make this a successful upgrade. We've seen this dozens of times and we offer a, um, offering that gives you kind of a 40-hour assessment and roadmap view of things, so we can basically help you work through what those problems are going to be. And at that point in time, you know you're making roadmap decisions about how you're addressing some of those upgrade considerations. The second offering is a bit more involved as we can take it cradle to grave and help you through that upgrade process depending on the complexity and integration points you have in your environment. It can be as simple as 80 hours, or it could be larger, depending on what you have integrating with that system. But we're basically there to help you through the 10G either migration or 11G upgrade process, or even, even some of those patches. But basically, um, thanks for sticking with me this long, but um, in summary, I just want to say that compelling events trigger, the, trigger these upgrades, whether it's security, whether it's getting far behind, I'm just getting nervous, I want to take a transformation activity, and time it with other upgrade activities so I get my more bang for the buck. But it's about those key reasons to consider support, new features, performance, security, and cloud use cases. And we can help you with those use cases and assess the, those use cases and map them to your technology challenges, align that solution with your business problems because we focus on business problems. Even though we're a technology company, we like to focus on business problems. And don't let the lack of resources delay that upgrade to 12C. Like I said, the farther you get behind, the more timely and impactful it is. And I'd like to take you to the last. And we'll target over. Jason. If you have a few questions, so I'm going to forward on here as well because I just wanted to remind everyone that this was part one of two. So on Tuesday, August 8th, we're going to continue with part two. So we talked part one, getting you to 12C, and then part two is really how to optimize your overall 12C upgrade and investment. So let's take a look at some questions here. So one question is, what's an impact of an upgrade from Web Center content from 11G to 12C on workflow applications, Jerry? So um, it depends on whether or not you're taking advantage of a new hardware uh, refresh or not. Um, for items that are you're doing an in-place upgrade, you can, depending on where you're at in the version of 11G, you can do an in-place upgrade. The majority of folks are taking advantage of 
a new hardware platform at the time, going from 11G to 12C. But if you have customizations around that, um, they should work under 12C, depending on what they are. I haven't seen um, too many. What we're dealing with most of the time is what do you do with something that's in workflow, and if you have a long period of time for that item to get through workflow, what do you do with it at the time of an upgrade? Do you let it go through and finish under 11G and do all net news under 12C, or do you restart them through the workflow in that process? But the customizations are a big question in general. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot of major changes that need to take place from the customization perspective unless you are affecting the UI some way, somehow. And then there's some little changes that usually have to be done as a result of that. Okay, another question here as we're running to the end of the, our hour is, I believe this question is regarding the attachments capability, but I could be wrong. But we understand that there's obviously integrations between Oracle Web Center and some of the ERP applications, including PeopleSoft. So the question here is, the plugin that was available for the PeopleSoft integration for 11G, is that going to be made available in 12C? And this, uh, the person asking this question was very specific and asking if that's going to be available in the next release, which is dot three. I'm not sure if we can confirm that at this time, Jerry, but we can definitely check on that. Um, that is correct. I'm not sure about that PeopleSoft plugin, to be honest with you, um, but um, if you should double check on that and give you an email response as to where that sits. Awesome. So we're going to close it up at this time. We have uh, come to the end of our hour, and we want to be um, very uh, good stewards of your time. So we hope you enjoyed the material today. This uh, webinar, again, was recorded, and we'll be providing that link to the recording out soon. But again, remember that part two is on Tuesday. So if you haven't registered for that yet, hopefully you can, and you can join us on Tuesday to talk a little bit more about optimizing your Web Center investment. So with that, this is Jason Lehman of Fishbowl Solutions, and I wish you a good day.